everyone. Today I want to introduce you to the first chapter of the fuzzing book, which is called Introduction to Software Testing. Now, you may of course already know a bit about programming and therefore probably also a bit about testing, but we're going to use this um, brief video to get you acquainted with some of the code and conventions we are using in this very book. So, <clears throat> you may notice that um, all of the code in this book actually comes in Python. And here is one of our first Python examples. So we do have a function um, that computes the square root of a number x called my square root. And to do so, it uses the newton refson method. And let's have a look into um, how this function is written in Python. You're going to notice we have a definition at the very beginning of a function with a parameter x. You may notice that um, x and my square root come without types. In Python, it is possible to annotate things with types, but in the fuzzing book, we generally do without types. This doesn't mean that types aren't checked at all. Types uh, are checked at runtime. That's the big difference. So what does this function do? You'll see that the code for the function actually is indented, and indentation is significant in Python. This is how Python finds out which parts belong to each other, so there's no beginning and end braces, as you may have seen in other languages. So indentation is the significant factor in here. What we do have is uh, we do have a variable assignment here. This is as in C and other languages with a single assignment. We have a variable called approx, which initially gets the special value of none, indicating no value. And then we have a variable called guess, which is in our case the first guessing value for the square root. And uh, we assign it the half of x. This is actually a floating point division in here. There's also a integer uh, flow. There's also an integer division in Python, which comes with two slashes. Now we have a loop, and you can again see that the loop body is indented in here, and this loop goes along while the approximation uh, has not yet met the guess level. So what we do here is we do have a new approximation, which is the guess, and we create a new guess, which it comes from this formula over here. And we repeat the whole thing until the approximation and the guess are equal, and then we return the whole thing. So <clears throat> this is a very simple Python function. And uh, we do have some pointers here, in particular up here in the help menu. We can go uh, to towards the Python tutorial. If you haven't seen Python before, this is the place to go. Now <clears throat> we can see what this function actually is doing, but not only in the, but not only by reading the HTML page here but actually by going into the resources menu. And here you will find a special place called edit as notebook, which we're going to invoke right now. What you get here is a is the so-called my binder environment, which is now going to start a Jupyter notebook with this code just for you, in which you can interact with the code to your liking. Here we go. This is the Jupyter notebook. And you see that this contains the same material as the text you have just seen. The difference is that now you can actually go and edit these parts. For, for doing so, you click on one of these uh, cells, as they're being called, these sections that are here encircled here in green and blue. Blue is text, green is code. And by pressing Shift and Return at the same time, you can now go and execute this, which you can see here while it's executing it actually changes the number over here. So there's a star while it's computing, and every time you execute something, this number gets increased. So now we have sent this definition to a Python interpreter in the back, and we can now go and actually execute this thing. So if I click on this cell, my square root four, and again, press shift return, it computes an output, which is 2.0, and this invokes the function that we have just seen. So we can go to the cell and actually change the input in here. So we can change the code that is running in the cell. So for instance, if we want to compute the square root of nine using our definition, we put in my square root of nine. 
And here we go, we get three, uh, value of three. We can also compute the mi square root of two. Here we go, we get one dot O, and we can of course also come up with uh, arbitrary values. I don't know what the square root of pi is, but this is of course something that we can compute in here. 3.14, here we go. Oh, so we have the square root of pi. This is of course all our function. And we could actually go back to the original version in here and come back with a different implementation. So we could, for instance, change the code in here, um, or we can, um, so whatever. I, don't, I have no idea what happens if we, if we change the two in the code here to three. What I'm going to tell you is that this is no longer, this may no longer become a square root function at this point. But one thing you will frequently do while editing these um, functions is you're going to insert debugging statements. So we are, for instance, uh, what you can do here is print my square root, oops, my square root. And um, this print statement takes multiple arguments. So we can, for instance, go and say, okay, I am now invoking my square root of x. So this is a very simple thing. Invoking, here we go. Again, we send the definition in here. And now when we invoke my square root, every time that we invoke my square root, then this will actually be output, which is a great way to, well, a very simple way of debugging, of course, and a great way to get insights about what's happening within an individual function. So this is the basics of interacting with the, interacting with notebooks. We also have a short introduction within the book here itself. And if you want to know more about the Jupyter environment, um, we also do have help here on the upper right hand side. There is a Jupyter Notebook tutorial which tells you how to interact with Jupyter Notebooks. And um, for the later chapters, there is also um, introductions on how to install the code or the notebooks on your own machine, such that you can run them locally should this MyBinder environment not be available, or if you want to use them in your own code. That's all for now. Enjoy the read and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.